It was on 5th June of 2023 when Apple first announced the Vision Pro, a mixed reality headset that promised to bring what was once considered as science fiction into reality. A headset that has set the world at storm. Oh, you're crossing over? No. <gasps> oh my goodness. Butterfly is the coolest thing in VR. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Since its launch on January 19th of 2024, there have been videos coming out where people are using the Vision Pro in public, while commuting, in the pool, in restaurants, in gyms, and even in a cyber truck. And what is even more crazy is that when the product was announced on 5th of June, the consensus among the public was that it will fail miserably, as the price of $3,500 was too high for a VR headset. And many were also terrified that the virtual and artificial reality will disconnect us from the real world even more. But Apple has some different plans, and this is not the first time Apple has faced so much of heat. When it launched the first generation of AirPods back in 2016 and removed the headphone jack from iPhone 7, the heat was unreal. But today it feels so seamless. And it was no different when it launched the first iPhone. Steve Jobs goes to MacWorld and he he pulls out this iPhone. What was your first reaction when you saw that? Five hundred dollars, fully subsidized with a plan. I said that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard. And today it is the only way phones are built. So will Apple repeat the history, or the fate this time around has some other plans? The year is 1965, and a man called Evan Sutherland has set in motion the wheels of what we will ultimately call the virtual reality. He did so by creating the world's first head-mounted display. This device placed the user in a virtual world for the very first time, but the graphics were not so good. However, steady development of early VR tech during the 60s and 70s was driven by the U.S. military's work on vehicle simulators, specialist teams at NASA. and also researchers at the University of Utah. This progress in tandem with advancements in computer science graphics technology really began to gain momentum in the 1980s. And in the 90s, VR video games began to emerge. The earliest publicly available VR games came in the form of a special arcade machines. There you are. Hi. Hello there. <laughs> in 1991 to 93, the company Virtual Reality Games created a line of advanced VR machines with stereoscopic 3D visuals. But success in early VR games was rare. You're gone, John. Your history. Sega announced Sega VR in 1991, and it was even showcased in CES in 1993. But it never materialized as a retail product, despite reportedly having four games developed specifically for it. And in 1995, Nintendo released its Virtual Boy, marketed as the first portable video game console. But the unit was a commercial flop for many reasons. First, it only showcased two colors. red and black and customers just didn't like using it as it was impossible to play games with this thing in a comfortable position and a lack of software support made things even worse and after its massive failure virtual reality in the world of games at least had all but vanished from the scene across forums and developer events it was barely spoken of again until 1st of august in 2012 when there was a launch of a crowdfunding project on kickstarter for a little device called oculus rift A campaign that started with a plan to raise two hundred fifty thousand dollars ended up raising two point five million dollars within just one month. And in twenty fourteen, to everyone's surprise, it was acquired for a staggering two billion dollars by Facebook, an investment that shocked the world as Facebook had virtually no experience in gaming or virtual reality, and two billion dollars was too high a price for a company that was barely around for two years and had not sold a single unit till date. But Mark had some different plans. As he was skating to where the puck was going, rather than where the puck already was. As after the personal computer revolution, two new computing platforms emerged: smartphones and tablets, both of which were ruled by Apple and Google. And for Zuck, it was a golden opportunity in capturing this new platform and playing a dominant role there. After Facebook's purchase of Oculus, the industry started seeing traction of other large corporates. Sony announced that they were working on a PlayStation headset. Samsung announced the Samsung Gear VR, a headset that uses Samsung Galaxy smartphone as a viewer. 
and by 2016, hundreds of companies were developing VR products. And finally, in 2021, Facebook went all in on the VR space, when it rebranded itself to Meta, an abbreviation for the term Metaverse, and committed to spend at least $10 billion each year on its Metaverse division called Reality Labs, and also sold a dream that seemed too good to be true, as the VR headset would take you to a virtual space where you could do things that you just couldn't in the physical world, with people you couldn't physically be with. But investors did not really buy the dream as the stock fell by a staggering 70% in a matter of 9 months. So the industry, even after receiving so much of investment, was struggling to ignite interest in the general public and was only catering to a niche gaming audience. But this was soon about to change, as the big brother of tech was about to enter the space. Apple announced the Vision Pro at Worldwide Developers Conference in June of 2023. But the product took many years to build. Apple is known for its secrecy of the products it has under development. It has a very long development cycle for its products, which may take 5 to 6 years before they become official Apple products. And many, and I mean 90% of them, may never come into fruition as they do not match the Apple standards. But Vision Pro, according to some estimates, has been under development for more than an eye popping 16 years, as Apple had filed a patent that is similar to the Vision Pro back in 2007 which means it is under development way before the Oculus headset or anything from Samsung and other companies. And it also means that it was Steve Jobs, who was the CEO of Apple back then, who may have envisioned the product. Steve had just launched the iPhone and may have been thinking what the future would have looked like beyond the iPhone and iPad. And here is Steve Jobs talking about building headphones for eyes back in 2005. No, you know, the, the the fundamental problem here is that headphones are a miraculous thing. You put a pair of headphones and you get the same experience you get with a great pair of speakers, right? There's no such thing as headphones for video, right? There's, no, there's not something I can carry with me that I can put on and it gives me the same experience I get when I'm watching my, you know, 50-inch plasma display at home. And, you know, until somebody invents that, you're going to have these opposing constraints. Well, they have those huge goggles you can wear. Oh, but, they're, but they're lousy. But, right? but you never get a date if right. you ever wear them, right? But the Vision Pro took as long as it took to develop because Apple had to invent more than 50% of the technology in the headset by itself. And that is a big deal, as only Apple could have pulled it off due to its ownership of the CPU, GPU and proprietary chips like the Vision Pro's R1. And in 2017, while other VR companies such as Oculus were shipping their headsets, Apple was thinking about a more advanced headset that would be of more outstanding quality and capabilities than any other headset on the market. And despite its skepticism on announcement when it became available for pre-orders on 19th of January, it was selling like hotcakes and sold out within hours and the shipping time had slipped from February to March. And according to Forbes, Apple may sell every Vision Pro they can make in 2024 and will ship 1 million units in 2025, and up to 10 million in the first 3 years. But what really sets Apple apart from its competitors is that it is the only headset that people are willing to wear in public. As before the launch of Vision Pro, VR headsets were considered to be something that only gamers would use in their room. But Apple has already bought mass market appeal to it. People who are in no way gamers are willing to buy it for their day-to-day -day tasks, and according to some reviews, once you use them, it's difficult to leave. So is it the classic Steve Jobs product that people don't even know they want today, but will in the future? This only time will tell. But I definitely will not bet against the big brother.